Welcome to the Crazy Down Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Don. I'm the Explosive One. Let's crack into another one. TNT. Yo. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, but last year, okay. there was a multi-million dollar gold heist at the Toronto Airport in Canada. What? This? Wait, wait, hold on. Really? Yes. A they, multi? How much did they get? Uh, know? 22 Canadian million. <laughs> I don't know the exchange rate, so about about twenty. So twenty two dollars American. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So uh, yeah, gotcha. There was a uh, there was not nine people have been indicted. Only six have been picked up. Oh, that's there was crazy. nineteen accounts. Okay, so basically they figured out it was an inside job. The uh, the gold don't, in the you, currency. You don't say. Yeah, right. So the gold in the currency had just arrived for, on an Air Canada flight. And then two, at least two former Air Canada employees allegedly helped, you know, so they needed people inside, the, you know, to obviously facilitate it. Yep. So basically, like, they kind of gave them access into the area where it was being stored. They got in and just drove away. They, like, they used, like, a fake document to, to like, like, a fake Brinks document. So, like... They loaded it up in their truck and left, and then Brinks showed up to actually get it, and they're like, where's our fucking money? Yeah. And it wasn't there. Um, it says that they, like, it was a, a sophisticated crime organization planned it, and they wanted to traffic gold and firearms. It said they, they melted down the gold and the profits they've got and used it to finance firearms, and they were, like, creating, like, knockoff. I guess it's not knockoff because it's gold, but jewelry. And like other stuff, it says uh, they found they found like five crudely melted gold bangles worth about ninety thousand dollars when they like okay. arrested them. Okay. So it was the largest heist in Canadian history, uh, but it's the largest, sixth largest in the world crime history. Oh wow! And uh, okay, so, so we're yeah, talking about some serious. Oh yeah, it's a serious. Although we joke about it being twenty two Canadian million. Yeah, it's still it's the sixth largest ever heist. Like okay, I I literally made the joke about it being twenty two dollars American and subscribe to that. So yeah, when you say it's the sixth largest ever, that's yeah, yeah, crazy. that's what it says. I mean, who knows, man? Truth not facts. It's but... impressive, honestly. Um, I I give it up to those guys. It's it's crazy how people always forget the inside job idea it's like you always have to you can't just plan for everything like obviously being the inside job you know everything's going to happen i'm not trying to help any criminals out there but i'm going to help some criminals out there you always have to think of ways that they could outsmart you at your position if you're a driver what's the one glaring thing that the company is forgetting that you notice like yo this is an oversight this could easily be exploited Right, right. It's like like an office space. They're like, oh, we're just gonna round those cents off and then put them in an account, and eventually they'll add up. Yeah. And, and then there's always a there's always a like. Here's the thing. Inside yes, it could work, but is it going to? Nah, probably, probably not. not. not no, anymore. probably not, man. Like not not in this in 1972. Yes, people were smuggling drugs yeah. on planes and carry on bags, and like you're exactly. murdering people and getting away with it. They have forensic evidence. Like in 2024. You ain't getting away with shit. No. Nope. There's cameras everywhere. Crazy. Oh, that's the other thing I want to talk about, and I forgot. Oh, it was. Let's such... bring it up right now. Just talk about it. So, uh, I saw an article or yeah. a, a video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where this guy tried to rob a young lady on a college campus. Like they had, there was like a camera on like a a, bi a building in the campus. He tried to rob her. She. In one swoop motion, grabbed the gun, took the clip out of it, and threw it in the bush. And then the like the guy still had the gun, but there was no. She took the goddamn magazine out of the gun and threw it away while he was trying to rob her. And then you see him like try to like, and he like got all confused and, and just. I, I think they ended up arresting him, but like that's so funny. She just grabbed the gun, took the magazine out, and threw it threw it in the bush. That's like, hilarious, yeah. man. I, she was like 21 years old too. I'm like, okay, her her dad or somebody taught her how to handle firearms. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, how funny is that? Like, how terrible of a <laughs> robber do you have to be? That now, honestly, now, honestly, if that is not a uh, an indication for people need to learn how to handle firearms, I think that is number one right there. Yeah, at least to defend yourself. At least to disarm a gun. Yeah, take, take out the magazine. Take the mag out. Throw it. Fire off a shot. Take the one out of the chamber. Boom. What? Yeah, now what? Do? Now throw it at do? me. Get throw a nine yeah. at me. Try yeah. hit me in the leg. Exactly. Yeah, that's. 
honestly, honestly, ingenuity by that young lady. Yeah. As so. far as these people that tried to commit a crime, Jonas, oh my God, man. Inside jobs never work. No. They never work. Because people know that there's like, like when you exploit the weakness, they're like, oh, somebody in, you wouldn't know about that unless you either A, knew someone exactly. who was on the inside, exactly. or B, you're on the inside yourself. Exactly. Like if I know the, the back door at Joe Google's house doesn't work, and I tell somebody and they break in, they know that somebody knew that the back door at Joe Google's house exactly. was broke or someone left it unlocked for Joe Go for people to come into Joe Google's exactly. house. Exactly. Because nobody's been nobody's sitting there investigating your business to the point where they can figure out how to infiltrate it to this to that extent. Right. Right. Or they know there's a, they know there's like a password issue with something exactly. or like it, it, it's like somebody knows it's like, "Oh, that's easily exploitable." Like Exactly. It's some, the only way they can know is if they're on the inside. Right. Like, I knew when I was a teenager that the managers at the Wendy's never locked the goddamn floor safe. So, like, we could have just went in, took the bag, and took it. But, like, if you took it, they'd be like... Did, did you ever? No. Because they would obviously know that someone who works there knew and did it. Because who the hell else is coming behind the goddamn counter to get into the back and there's cameras? Like, it, It's almost a form of bait to have those types of like security foibles to a certain extent because like if you do try to do something they already they've already narrowed it down to who the possible uh right because you be. know you know a customer didn't come back behind the counter and wendy's go in the office and get the bag and if they did how'd they know where the floor safe was how did they know exactly. it was unlocked exactly. like exactly. You, you know like exactly so it's not, it's not a random occurrence yeah immediately it's like oh it was missing here who went in the office that night interview all those people there's like six of you like six people were in the office one of y'all took the money hmm. so i mean it's almost a form of security through like uh, the fact that there can only be so many people that can know the information. Right. Huh. Like that's sometimes that's knowing the information is all they need to nab you. Yeah. Because like because most only people... certain people know it. Right. Only exactly. It. Right. It's like if like they it's like sometimes I know like places will like leak a fake story and only know a handful of people know it. So if it gets leaked out, they know one of those handful oh, of people leak the yeah. fake story. Yeah. 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 Like if people yeah, are yeah. leaking secrets, like they'll leak something that isn't true. And they know that they only told like 10 people that story. And then they know mm -hmm. one of those 10 people is the culprit. I, I wouldn't say it's a common practice, but I feel like saying it's a common practice in the gaming industry where uh, if a game is leaked or certain information about a game is leaked, they know who it is because certain only certain aspects have been leaked to certain departments. Well, right. Like, and it's, it's a way to secure the products. It's a way to secure, secure security. I'm not mad. Well, right, at it. because I'm not like, mad we at talked it. to like like uh, Melody Pang, which I actually have to get with her to try to get on the podcast again. Um, you know, she had talked; she was doing a voiceover for a game. We're like, "Oh, what game?" She's like, "I can't say." Like, just the fact that you know the game exists is enough that like if you told it, they could find out, and then you'd get fired or whatever. You know, absolutely, it's like absolutely. It's, you know, and she's like, or or I think she told us they gave her. She's like, the name I have, I don't even think is the right name of the game. So if it came out that like it was called like War of the Warriors, and they're like. Only like a handful of people know the game is called that, and it's not even the real title. And they're like, "Okay, which one y'all told everybody yeah, we're putting yeah. out a game called War of the Warriors?" You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's yeah. so it's an easy way to catch people. It is, and honestly, it is. And and companies think about this beforehand, and they ensure themselves through these tactics. It's almost like like I said, it's almost like bait. Well, I it's really, almost like I have, bait. A, I have a really hot take: have fucking integrity and don't steal from your job. I mean, you you can you know dynamite's about the penalization, so you're not wrong. Accountability is hey, key, my friend. Stop stealing! Stop! St you know, I remember back in the '90s they used to have a shirt a shirt that says "Stop snitching." Yeah, I want to put a shirt that says "Stop stealing." I'm gonna put that on a shirt. Do it. Stop stealing. My heart. My heart. Yeah, put that on there. Stop <laughs> I, stealing my heart. Nah, my and heart the girls can't be, be so. And the girls would be like, "Damn, dynamite! I'm about to steal that heart." And you're like, "It's gone, girl." You can't. Yeah, you can't steal whatever that don't exist. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair <laughs> it, enough. It's shriveled and dark and lives in a little <laughs> recess in my cavity. <laughs> would you steal a raisin? <laughs> I don't think so. That's my heart. <laughs> so, anywho, that's all the time we have for this episode. Please make sure to like and subscribe, our Jonas.
TNT. Oh, yeah. 